So we're really excited. There's a show coming to Liverpool. You've probably heard about this before. It's called First Time. And the popularity has been, has been so high in terms of people wanting tickets for this that we've had to put another date on at the Unity Theatre. It's next Thursday, next Friday, and the star of the show is with us on the guide, Liverpool Nathaniel Hall. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. So you're in Brighton at the moment on this kind of big, long tour of this incredible show. What's it like being back first off? Obviously, theatres have been closed for so long. What's it been like for you? As a performer, it's amazing to be back in theatres doing what you love. You know, I always have to pinch myself that this is my job anyway. Um, but the one thing I haven't, I had forgotten is how exhausting performing, not, not just any show, but this particular show is both physically and emotionally. We we got to talk about the show. Uh, the reviews are incredible, so the word powerful is thrown about, but, but also the word humour. Tell us about the show and, and how it came about in your words. So the show, um, first time, is is my life story from, so when I was 16, um, just coming of age, young gay boy in Stockport near Manchester, um, I met a guy who was older than me and we started a bit of a summer romance, a bit of a grease moment, um, and, and as a result of that I contracted HIV from that first sexual encounter and what I did at the time was just kind of lock that that down and just got on with my life um, I didn't tell very very much any people I didn't tell my family and then if we fast forward to 2017 um, I caught myself two days uh, awake still still awake two days after a house party and I realized that drugs and alcohol and all sorts of other things toxic relationships were really impacting my life and I realized it was because of the the trauma and the pain of what had happened to me in the past that I hadn't dealt with and that I was carrying this secrecy and this shame in my life around the diagnosis I went on this journey to make this show as a way to kind of exercise everything that was in me and get it all out and get it all out on the, on the page and then on the stage it sounds it sounds pretty heavy and it does go to some dark places but people are often surprised that at how funny and entertaining the show is. It's bright, it's colourful, there's loads of noughties bangers in there, there's like Steps and Will Young and people come out feeling really nostalgic for the noughties as well. Though obviously this is your story, this is the life that you've lived and you're seeing people react to that who don't know you, who are sitting in a theatre and it, does that kind of give you some solace in terms of, of the dark things that you've been through? What makes it all worthwhile is the messages that I get from people after the show, regardless of whether they've been impacted by HIV, because the show really is about shame. And we all carry shame in our lives in, you know, different ways. It, it shows people that it is possible to work through painful experiences and to live, you know, happily and, and boldly as well after them. You know, since it's a sin, which we've got to talk about in a, in a second, HIV, is, it's being spoken about, but it's being spoken about in, in the right ways right now. It must be good for you to see this change. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're obviously a part of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I come at the end of a long line of amazing, you know, activists and charities and organisations that have kind of campaigned for better healthcare for people with HIV over the years. And first time, you know, it, it is an education that you, you come away and people are often surprised by the things that are in it, you know, so people on effective medication like myself who have an undetectable viral load can't pass HIV on. Now, not many people know that, so that's new science that's come in the last few years and, and it's really important for me as a HIV activist that, that that education is there. That said, the show never feels like a lesson. Tell me about it to see and, and the reaction that we've all seen since that program aired on, on Channel 4. It was, it was the most bizarre experience of my entire life and even Russell messaged me and said, he's like, I did not expect this. Everyone was talking about it. And then charities like the Terence Higgins Trust, Sahe House in Liverpool, George House Trust in Manchester, and all the other activists jumped on that moment and just went, everyone's talking about it, now we can re-educate and we can tell you how HIV has changed and that, you know, it is a, a treatable illness, it's a preventable illness as well. So, yeah, it shows you the power of really good drama to kind of uh, impact social change. Back to the Unity Theatre, have you been to Liverpool? Have you been out in Liverpool before? Oh, absolutely. I used to work in Liverpool, so okay. I, used to, I used to work for the, the amazing theatre company 20 Stories High, based in Tottenham. So I, I absolutely love Liverpool. It's a great city. Um, I've, you know, I've worked on a number of shows at the Unity, so I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be coming back. Okay, well, listen, last of the tickets available, 21st, 22nd. Um, Nathaniel's bringing this show to Liverpool. You've got to go and see it. Just, just finally, Nathaniel, why should people book their tickets? It's a really hopeful show, and I think, you know, we've all lived through a really tricky 
at Tiny's last 18 months. It's a show that's all about family, it's about coming of age, it's about first love, you know, it's about all these universal themes. Um, and so you'll have a really, really great night out at the theatre. Listen, Nathaniel Hall, can't wait to see you first time in Liverpool next week. Unity Theatre, keep doing what you're doing, Nathaniel. Thank you for chatting to us, mate.